When you write a paper for a class, your ideas don't form in a vacuum. Ideas are passed from scholar to scholar, refined, revised, and reformed in a process called the scholarly conversation. For example, if you are writing a paper about ideal societies, you would first research what other authors and scholars have written about this topic. After carefully examining, comparing, and or synthesizing what others have written, you add your own ideas. However, you must credit the original authors of these sources by citing them. Citations contain information to help readers locate the exact source you used. For example, the citation for the book, Brave New World, would include the author's name, the book title, the place of publication, and the date of publication. Here is an example of a citation of an article from the journal Science. Article citations also include volume and issue numbers and page numbers. This is an example of a citation for a web page. Since web resources change frequently and even disappear, the citation includes the date the item was viewed. Exactly where and how citation elements appear varies by citation style. There are numerous styles, but these three are widely used. Styles dictate not only how citations appear at the end of a work, but also how they appear within the text. The Modern Language Association style is used often for humanities courses. In the humanities, emphasis is placed on authorship, so authors' names are cited within the text of your paper. The American Psychological Association style is popular in social science courses. Since currency of works is important in the social sciences, you would cite the date a work was published in the text of your paper. The Chicago Manual of Style is used often in history courses. This style uses footnotes and endnotes to identify the origin of sources. Properly citing your sources will help you avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism is passing off others' ideas as your own, intentionally or unintentionally. Stealing unique terms of phrase, patch writing together phrases from a source, insufficient paraphrasing, and misquoting are all examples of plagiarism. Let's see if you can identify plagiarism. Here is a passage from the book, The Americans, The Democratic Experience, by Daniel Borston. Here is the passage again. Let's take a look at how Abby used Borston's words in her paper. Is it plagiarism? You make the call. This is plagiarism in its worst form. Abby does not indicate the source of the ideas, misleading the reader to think that the ideas are hers. She has stolen the words and ideas and attempted to cover the theft by changing a few words. Let's see if Brian does any better. Take a look at his paper. Is it plagiarism? You make the call. Even though Brian acknowledges his source, this is still plagiarism. He has copied the original almost word for word, but he doesn't use quotation marks to show the extent of his borrowing. Let's take a look at Chantal's paper. Is it plagiarism? You make the call. Chantal has identified her source at the beginning of the paragraph, letting readers know who is being quoted, and has provided a footnote directing them to the exact source of the statement. She has paraphrased some of Borston's words and quoted others, but makes it clear to the reader which words are hers and which belong to Borston. Good job, Chantal! And then there is the issue of copyright. It is easy for students to search the web for images, videos, and music to use in your projects. But keep in mind that what you find may be subject to copyright restrictions. What kinds of things can be copyrighted? Ideas cannot be copyrighted. 
But as soon as ideas are put into a fixed, tangible medium such as a musical score or a canvas, it is copyrighted, even if it does not have a copyright symbol. What is copyright anyway? Copyright gives authors exclusive rights to publish, produce, distribute, and sell their work for a certain length of time. One exception to this is fair use, which allows use and reproduction of copyrighted works for the purposes of scholarship, research, or education. So it's okay to make a photocopy of a journal article to use for a class assignment, as long as you cite the material you use. Works that are in the public domain are not protected by copyright. Examples of public domain sources include U.S. government documents, such as the Constitution, works on which the copyright has expired, like some episodes of The Three Stooges, and works created and first published before 1923, such as the plays of William Shakespeare. These works may be used or modified by anyone without permission of the authors, but must still be cited. Thank you for watching. For more information, visit this library guide.